1945, a girl was born in Grapeland, Texas, the youngest of 12 children born to two sharecroppers. It was a home with no running water, electricity, or even books to read. She spent some of her younger years working a cotton plantation with her family and imagining far different worlds before moving to Houston and finding a love for reading. She would later write of the role educators played in her formative years, including a teacher named Miss Ida May, saying, quote, everybody I knew was an uneducated farmer or laborer who spoke or read with difficulty. To be in the presence of a person who spoke so well was a revelation. I wanted to seize control of these words and make them work for me. And seize them she would, graduating from HBCU Dillard University before moving on to earn her master's and doctorate from Harvard. She would later become the first black woman president of an Ivy League school and later went on to serve as president of two other universities. Joining me now is the person I'm talking about, Dr. Ruth Simmons, former president of Smith College, Brown University, and Prairie View A&M, and the author of Up Home, One Girl's Journey. Dr. Simmons, it is great to see you. Welcome to the Saturday Show. You know, thank you so much. Yes, your resume is a list of firsts. First black president of Smith College, the first black president of an Ivy League school with Brown University, and the first female president of Prairie View A&M. Quite a beautiful trajectory from your humble beginnings. It is, but um, I wrote the book, uh, Jonathan, really to make sure that my students understood that there's nothing miraculous in what I've done. I've just taken advantage of every opportunity to learn. Summer, um, we saw the Supreme Court strike down affirmative action programs and the consideration of race in the admissions process to colleges and universities. Um, in, in talking about your story, I'm just wondering what effect will this have on black students and the institutions of higher learning that prize diversity? Well, that's one reason I wanted. I'm, I'm thankful that my book is coming out now because uh, young people might see this decision as blocking their path to opportunity and blocking their path to success and happiness. I want them to know that we've been through so many versions of the current crisis uh, mm -hmm. and that because of our forebears, because of the activists, because of good, caring people, we've come through them. And so I'm, I'm hoping that this gives them some view of how we will manage through this crisis. And it is a crisis, but we'll manage through it. Um, it's, a, it's being uh, carried out in a political context. Remember that. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, political contexts don't last forever especially when people are engaged and, in, and interested in overturning um, uh, 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 really obsolete policies. You know, to pick up on your comment about these things, you know, polit political context that don't last forever. In Florida, we're seeing a systemic dismantling of teaching of black history, including new standards that push ideas like enslaved people develop skills that could be applied for their personal benefit. Um, <laughs> your, your thoughts on this rewriting of history, because the political context is not, doesn't last forever. But if you take away people's knowledge, that has the potential of lasting forever. Well, uh, it, it, it cannot last for, forever. It is, it is sinister beyond belief. Mm. Um, remember now, when I was a child, um, uh, we were forbidden to know certain kinds of things. Uh, we were fed a diet of you are inferior. You'll always be inferior. Uh, your history is worth nothing. You don't need to know about it. We've been through that. Um, but as I say, um, the human spirit uh, fundamentally knows better than that. And we overcome it. And so whatever they do to try to squelch our ability to know who we are and what we're worth, that is always going to be overturned, uh, especially with novices getting into the educational system mm -hmm. and trying to shape it uh, to their own ends. They know nothing about education. They know nothing about history. Um, and so educators especially have to be at the forefront in fighting these impulses to become ignorant again. Dr. Simmons, the, the number one thing you want folks to take away 
from reading your book up home? Well, I'm sure you had the same experience that I had, Jonathan, because of your success. Um, I want them to understand that education is everything. Uh, I want uh, young people to put the time in to learn about uh, the past, to learn about their history, to learn about uh, what they can accomplish in their lives. If they invest their time in that, no matter what happens to them, they're going to be able to help the world become a better place. I want uh, them to read. I want them to become articulate in speaking out on issues, in uh, articulating their, their, their desires. Uh, it's so important for us to have a voice. We should treasure that voice. We should develop that voice fully. And if we do, uh, we'll be able to um, to overcome all of these adverse decisions that are being made right now. Dr. Simmons, I treasure your voice. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dr. Ruth Simmons, thank you so much thank you. for coming to The Saturday Show.